Thank you for joining the City of Kingston's Common Council at our monthly caucus meeting. Today is Monday, January 4th. My name is Andrea Schott, the Council President and Organizer for tonight's meeting. Before we begin, we'd like to go over a few guidelines to help us navigate the system as efficiently and respectfully as possible. We ask that members of the public and press remain muted and off camera for the length of the meeting. As organizer, I reserve the right to mute anyone who unmutes themselves. Council members, city staff, and our guests will control their own mute button. Good practice would be to mute yourself if you are not speaking to avoid background noise and feedback. If a council member or staff wishes to speak, they will raise their hands. The chairperson will call on them before they speak by stating their name clearly for our audio listeners. All of our meetings are recorded. Both video and written transcriptions will be made available to the public on the city's website. Although we will not have public speaking tonight, you could sign up to speak at our council meeting tomorrow evening. Uh, you can do that by emailing Elisa Tinty by noon tomorrow. The email address is emtinty at kingston-ny.gov. If you have any audio issues, send a text message to the following number, 845-594-6120. Please note that phone calls will not be answered during the meeting. The number again to text is 845-594-6120. As the organizer for tonight's meeting, I reserve the right to lock and pause the meeting to eject anyone who has behaved inappropriately. Lastly, at tonight's meeting, we have an attendance Majority Leader, the Chair of tonight's meeting, Alderman Rennie Scott Childress, Council Members, Alderwoman Rita Worthington, Alderman Don Tollerman, Alderman Jeffrey Ventura Morrell, Alderman Steve Shabbat, Alderman Doug Coop, and Alderman Tony Davis. City staff, we have Corp Council Kevin Bryant, Corp Council Dan Gardenstein, and City Clerk Elisa Tinty. We also have for the Majority Leader vote, uh, the co-chairs of the Kingston Democratic Committee, Matt Dunn and Amy Peterson. Thank you for your patience during these difficult times and, this, and for tonight as we switch platforms and dealing with a couple tech issues. Um, and I now turn the floor over to the chair, Rennie Scott Childress. And thank you for that, President Schott. I will in turn turn the floor over to the chairs of the Democratic Party. Matt Dunn and Amy Peterson, uh, both stalwart participants in the politics of Kingston. People have done a great job moving our city forward in a number of ways, and I appreciate their work and their being here tonight to run the election for majority leader. Thank you. Um, thank you for that great introduction, Rennie. Um, Matt and I are happy to be here and um, Wish you all a very happy, healthy new year. As Andrea and um, Rennie aforementioned, we are here to elect a new majority leader for the 2021 year. So uh, the co-chairs now recognize Rennie to nominate for majority leader. I would like to nominate Tony Davis at this time. Uh, Tony has been a member of the council for more than half a decade, probably feels more like half a century. Uh, he's done great work on the council. I've always looked with respect to Tony because he is able to look at everybody else with respect. Throughout my experience uh, with Tony on the council, I have seen him na navigate difficult situations, but always by taking the measure of the person he's speaking to and the issue he's speaking about, so that he does not lose his cool, but rather speaks to the issue and to what's in his heart. I remember particularly one night um, a couple of years ago when we had a discussion, a bunch of students from the high school showed up. Uh, we were voting on a memorializing resolution and there was a difference of opinion. Some people voted one way, some another. Tony, the inveterate uh, junior high teacher uh, took the students uh, aside in a sense and said, look, this is how it works. This is not arguing. This is discussion. And now that we've had the discussion, we got our points out. We said what we needed to say. We took a vote and now we move on. It was a great lesson in how to engage in politics and a lesson that I think so many of us still need to learn here in the present day. Tony is not about winning and losing on political issues. Tony is all about trying to do what is best for Kingston as he understands it through discussions with his uh, constituents and other people here on the Common Council. 
Thank you. And before anyone says a second, I would thank, uh, and Brittany, thank you for the consideration. And, but at this time, I would have to decline and it, being considered for this position. Um, and Brittany, uh, you are doing a great job as the chair, chairperson and chairman. So, and my hat would be for you to continue to run unless somebody else is being nominated. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rennie. Thank you, Tony. Um, are there any nominations from the floor? Uh, chair recognizes Steve Shabbat, Alderman Shabbat. Can you unmute yourself? Top right by your um, of your picture, there's uh, unmute. Okay, well, the button was somewhere else but thanks thanks for the info um thanks amy um at this time speaking of long time uh, on a job seems like forever i'm sure to uh, use rennie's rennie's term um rennie has been our our leader for uh two or three terms already um i'm i'm very happy with his leadership qualities um, he really moves us along um, with wisdom and good humor. Um, you know, I, I would like to see his continued leadership in this role. So I will take the opportunity to nominate Reynolds Scott Childress. Thank you, Alderman Shabbat. Um, is there a second to this nomination? Alder, Alderwoman Worthington, I think, had her. And, uh, Good evening. Happy New Year to everyone. I just want to uh, echo Steve Shabbat's sentiments and I'll second that um, nomination for Rennie Scott Childress to continue as our majority leader. Thank you. Don, did you want to second the second or we're good? Okay. Are there any other nominations for majority leader? Are there any other nominations for majority leader? Are there any other nominations for majority leader? Okay, there are no other nominations. I need a move to close nominations. Can someone make a motion? Thank you, Alderman Morrell. And a second to close. It's a tie. Um, Alderman Davis, I think we can just cast one vote, correct? Or do we need a show of hands? I think we could cast one vote, yes? No? All right, well, no one's said- Yes, I, was, we, I think a couple of us were okay. nodding our heads, but- Thank you. <laughs> thank you, all right, so we would, um, thank you, Doug, uh, Alderman Coop. All right, at this time, Alderman Morrell, um, everyone has uh, basically, since there is only one candidate and nominations are closed, then um, Alderman Scott Childress is the majority leader for 2021. Congratulations, Rennie. Thank you very much. I Thank you for your work. Support. Um, I hope too that as we go forward uh, and we actually start to see each other in person, uh, at some point here in the next few months, I hope that we can talk even more closely about how things operate uh, so that we can work even better as a group of folks who can communicate easily and clearly as we tackle the difficulties coming out of the COVID crisis. I look forward to working with each and every one of you here in the near future and over the next year. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Scott Childress. Um, my co-chair, Matt, and I thank you all for your hard work. I know it's extremely difficult in person and in Zoom. So um, I thank you and look forward to working with you this next year. So I will turn the meeting back over to Alderman Scott Childress. Great. Thank you, venerable co-chairs. <laughs> You're welcome to stick around and watch. Yeah, I haven't seen what's on the agenda. I'll stick around for a little bit. Oh, really exciting pro forma things. I'm sure. <laughs>
All right, then. Uh, if everyone will turn to the agenda for tonight, uh, most of the items here are um, the uh, uh, um, administrative uh, things that we have to take care of every January. So we'll start with resolution one. Uh, this is uh, recommending approval for adopting the tentative order of business. Does anybody have any discussion, concerns, issues relating to this? Seeing no discussion or concerns, we'll move on to resolution two, recommending approval for adopting the rules of the council for the year uh, 2021. And I believe President Schott, there are no significant changes or any changes in the rules? No changes from 2020. And the only changes in 2020 were to uh, gender neutral some of the stuff. Thank you for inventing a new verb. All of you just witnessed that. Beautiful to see. Uh, resolution three, recommending approval for designating the Daily Freeman as the official newspaper of the city of Kingston for 2021. Everybody good with that? It's pretty amazing that we've had a paper here for, um, I think more than a century running continually. So kudos to the Freeman for surviving in this difficult media environment. Resolution four, recommending approval for renewing the city of Kingston's investment policy for the year 2021. Um, Alderman Coop, I believe there's nothing of merit or note rather here. Am I right on that? Uh, back, back when I was former chairman of uh, finance last year, we reviewed this with John Tuohy, and I don't think we had any problems with renewing the city of Kingston investment policy. This was spelled out to us in great detail, and I don't think there were any problems with it, so I urge its passage. Great. So any questions or concerns with that? All right. Uh, resolution 5, recommending approval for receiving the mayor's message. Yes, we're good with this. All Did right. The mayor's message. Receiving the mayor's message. Yes, I believe it's going to be in the form of a recording this time, or will the mayor be providing it live? Uh, I was informed, Rennie, today that it will be um, a recording that I will be sent to me tomorrow afternoon. So, all right. Just have to yeah. figure out how to make that work. But it... is that what you were asking, Tony? Yes, I was. Yes, we're going to receive that tomorrow, correct? Yes, uh huh. Right, Common Council. Mm -hmm. So, I have a question, Rennie. Yes. So, um, Andrea, if you're if you receive that tomorrow and you send that to us, we could are we going to be able to hear that prior to council? So, I mean, th all this information came to me today. Um, that it was going to be a recording. I assumed he was going to come to the meeting. Um, so I'm getting a link so that I could then screen share it to everybody during the meeting. So if the, everybody will receive the address during the meeting. It's just, I will have it. I will be the one sharing it. Okay. But I wasn't planning on watching it until the meeting myself, nor was I planning on sending it to anybody in the council in advance. But I mean, I don't know the proper protocol since this never happened. I just assumed I would just share it on during the meeting as if it was happening live. Okay. I don't know if anybody objects to that, but that, that was my plan. All right, so any other questions, concerns, comments relating to that? All right, then uh, resolution six, uh, requesting the Common Council to accept the 2019 audited financials as prepared by RBT CPAs. Um, I believe there wasn't, there was some discussion of this in the finance committee. Um, Steve Shabbat. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we did discuss this in quite detail with John Tuohy. Uh, he took us through the audit um, step by step. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time on it. Uh, we had the opportunity to ask questions as we saw fit. Um, 
I, you know, I really have no objections with the audit. Um, as Mr. Tui says, there was nothing that really stood out that, you know, needs urgent correcting on our behalf. I think we got, we got pretty good grades on it. So, um, I, I'm certainly going to be voting to accept it. Anyone else? All right, great then. Uh, resolution seven, uh, this is out of the Public Safety Committee regarding uh, removing handicapped parking on Klingberg Avenue. This is, I think, pretty clear, but uh, Alderman Davis, any comments? Well, seven and eight are very clear, just removing handicapped parking and, and parking uh, si signage from in front of two residents and, and from Alderman Don Tollerman, and they both requested to have them removed. All right, good. Uh, so I'm assuming everybody's okay then with uh, both of those. Uh, and then resolution nine, uh, this is one that's come to us recently. Uh, so this did not go through committee, but it's important that we send this out uh, because there's a, a, a time is of the essence element to it. Uh, and this is asking for uh, permission to send this request out to a couple of planning boards. Um, Alderman Ventura Morell, would you like to detail this for us? Uh, yes, so I had um, I met with the owner with the property owners at uh, 79 Harley Avenue, and um, this is uh, they were they're asking uh, to rezone. It's already a commercial uh, property, and they're rezoning to a different grade of commercial. Uh, so the their current tenant has uh, downsized. So what their uh, what their plan is is to. Um, to change their uh, designation so that they could subdivide the building and have several tenants uh, occupying the space that is now vacant. Um, I don't believe they're changing the outside structure of the building. So everything, everything that's changing is with inside uh, the building. So um, I think this is a this is something that's a good idea. And um, it, uh, as you said, it didn't go through laws and rules. Uh, it's uh, it's a time sensitive issue, so we're referring it out to the in, uh, interested agencies. Uh, but it will be at laws and rules uh, for discussion. And um, uh, I think the next step will be to schedule a public hearing after we hear back from the agencies. Good, uh, Alderman Tollerman. Hi, Don Tolman. Um, Jeffrey, what makes it time sensitive if it's just a matter of um, rezoning to allow more businesses or within the building? What, um, what would need to be rushed? Uh, I don't think it's being rushed. I think it's uh, we have one, when something is referred, uh, when something is, uh, when an application comes in, we have 90 days to make a decision. And because of the timing of when the application comes, if it was, uh, if we waited until the February laws and rules, it would be past that uh, timeline. Did Dan have something to add there? Yeah, and the statute specifically says that when a petition is filed, um, it's supposed to be addressed by the council at the next scheduled meeting. So given that this petition was filed about 10 days ago, the next scheduled council meeting um, is today. So basically this is just following the statute. Also, we're not voting on the merits of the request. This is simply voting to send it out for comment uh, to the county and city planning boards, right? Correct. Uh, yes, and if there is no formal vote on the petition within the designated time in the statute, it's deemed granted on default. So um, hence the reason to move the matter along, get the referrals out, get it in the hands of both planning boards and give them the opportunity to comment um, and also get the public hearing scheduled uh, as soon as possible thereafter. Right. Thank you, Dan. Anything else, Jeffrey? That's it. All right, any other questions? Uh, President Schott, then uh, Tony Davis. Yeah, so I realized that there's there were a couple items that came out of community development and th they were not sent to Elisa and I will definitely take part of the blame for that. Um, at least, and I just coordinated it. I will send those to her after caucus. 
and she'll get it at to you all t um, tomorrow morning. But Steve Shab is here, so he could talk you through what those votes, and actually Amy Peterson could talk through those. It just didn't make it to this um, this list. So we will have, I think it's two things that were passed out of committee. So we will have two more. So just tomorrow morning, be on the lookout for that. But I'm sure Steve could talk you through it. And I just apologize for that mistake. What are those items so that we know ahead of time if Steve or Amy can ex explain what they are? Yeah, the votes, uh, the committee reports are um, for the allocations for the, uh, the COVID community block grant. We did that last month. The committee reports are are reflecting our our votes on that. And what 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 dollar amount is that? There there's three. There was two reallocations and then the new allocation. Um, I don't have the exact dollar amount of the latest round, but the um, I don't know which order you will get them. But there was the one hundred twenty thousand dollars. 50,000 for the Van Buren Street Shades, uh, Van Buren Street Parks shade structure, and 70,000 for the playground at Kingston Point Park. And that is um, an amalgam of several years of unspent monies. So it's multiple years and multiple, you know, CDBG reallocations, basically. So where's their first amount of 150,000? Where is that going? There's, I don't know what 150. Oh, I thought you said 150,000. So 120. So there's 50 for the shade structure at Van Buren Street Park, 70,000 for the playground at Kingston Point Park. So that's one. Um, that is not COVID related. So I need to do 30 days into the paper and then has to be approved by HUD. Everything has to be approved by HUD. But that is multiple years. Um, the second one, as I said, I may not be saying in order. I don't know which order you will receive them. The second one is 95,000 to be reallocated from the first round of CV funds, CDBGCV funds. Um, family had seeded their 80,000 that had been awarded to them for rental assistance. And um, Midtown, Rise Up Kingston had seeded their 15,000 um, due to eligibility requirements. So that 95,000 needed to be reallocated. And I didn't realize I was going to be speaking or I'd have my numbers right away, but the committee voted to increase, to give us the, to give the city the full 20% of their, um, a, a lot of their legal allocation for administration. We were entitled to 88,000 plus because it was 20% of the 440,000 and the award was for 30,000. So they increased that from that 95, 58,000 is, you know, has been reallocated for administration and the remainder to RUPCO for um, rental assistance. And then the third one, the third vote is for the second round of CDBG funding. Kingston's second round of CDBG funding, and that's $226,756, something like that. But that hasn't been allocated. Tony, I'll also, I'll send this to you guys all tonight after this meeting too. So okay. I'll now, my other, my other part of this question is that um, I thought in the first meeting that we were supposed to know um, our, our, our chairs or committees that we're going to be sitting on oh that's it was that's that cool? are we supposed to know that no no it's not for you right now I'm just looking <laughs> like, out there are we supposed to yeah, know I, well i i sent them all to elisa today and they'll be i everybody who has there was a change i did let the the change know so if there if you didn't have if you didn't hear from me there's no change So we won't know until tomorrow who to change, what the changes are. I could, I mean, I could tell you right now, if you want who's to hear. The chair, who's the chair of the finance? Uh, Rennie. All right. Okay. Jeffrey chairing laws and rules. You're chairing public safety and Steve Shabbat is chairing community development. All right. 
So we'll find that whole entire list tomorrow of what our, yeah. what our assignments are. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, uh, Doug Coop. Yeah, on the change in uh, finance committee, I, I I feel I must ask to the uh, uh, Madam Chairman, Madam President. I I know it was your wish to change the chairmanship of this, and it's certainly that is your decision. But I think I and my colleagues deserve an explanation as to why you felt that I should not continue on as chairman of the finance committee. I would say that appointing Rennie as chairman, who is perfectly capable, I have absolutely no problem with that. He is, first, he is absolutely capable of doing that. If you appoint him chairman, as I said to you in an email, I think it's not good practice to retain the former chairman. So you have appropriately moved me to another committee. But it's not clear to me, and I think you owe an explanation to my colleagues and indeed the public as to why you felt it was necessary to replace me after five years as chairman of this committee. I'm very upset about this and I think very much less of you for doing this. Thank you. I wish well, you had, when I reached out to you like a week ago, I wish you had expressed this um, because I did not get that impression from you and I would have been happy to have a conversation with you, which I'm more than willing to do if you would like to give me a call. I have no more to say on the matter at the present time. All right, is there um, anything else that anyone would like to say tonight? Because we're at the end of the resolutions, uh, we will be getting the other two. And um, anything else anybody wants to say before we adjourn? Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year to you too. Anybody else? I, I will I will presume that everybody wishes everyone a happy new year. All right, then we'll take a um, motion to adjourn. Tony Davis, second from Steve Shabbat, all in favor? Yes. All right, great. So we will see everyone back in cyberspace tomorrow night at the Common Council regular meeting. Thanks all for attending and look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Night. Night.